When Sherry Jean Grossi's horse Sinbad fell 300 feet down the side of a steep canyon, she and her friend Jack Snyder feared the worst. Sherry, this leg is awful bloody, but I don't think it's broken. I assessed the horse. I rubbed him down and, and couldn't feel uh, a great deal of heat, certainly no protruding bones. And, and I was amazed that he'd gone where, where he had gone, and, and there was absolutely nothing that appeared to be broke. Come on, son. Come on. Come on, baby, get up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, now. Oh, son. Oh, now. Okay, oh, okay. oh. Okay. He was pretty cut up. He was starting to shake all over. But he was moving. He was alive and scared. Sinbad's veterinarian, Dr. Vern Thacker, was called in. What happened? Well, come off the ravine up there and down the slope. I was amazed at the distance he had fallen. My greatest concern was that there's lots of, of complications that can develop as a result of going through trauma like that. Yeah, it's going to take a bit to... I had to be realistic. He may look good from the outside, but how does he look on the inside? He took a terrible fall. A fall that no horse should have lived through. There you go, Sherry. You and we're trying to figure out how we would get him out, or how we could get him out. There was no way to get him back up to the top. Well, we'll, we'll treat him for the shock. Initial considerations were to push him off into the water and take him down to a trail to where he could walk out of. But he wasn't walking very well, and, and he was shocky. I didn't think he needed any further trauma. So we decided to try and organize and get things together for the next day and have Sinbad stay overnight. I told Sherry I didn't want him to lay down because he did have an elbow fracture that might get further damaged if he did lay down. It was the longest night I've ever spent in my life. I'd go stand with him and just hold him and tell him that we were going to get him out of there. And that he was going to be just fine. Not really sure myself if we were going to get him out of there. But I guess I said it because I felt I needed to hear it. The next morning, Sherry's husband, Fred Giangrossi, called around, searching for someone who could evacuate the injured yeah. horse. The top there, the ravine. When I called our veterinary, Dr. Thacker, uh, he'd been trying to reach me at home all night. And he said that uh, he thought he knew of a man that was going to be able to help. Helicopter pilot Scott Baker, who had performed a similar rescue once before, agreed to try to lift Sinbad out of the steep canyon. Nobody wants to fly in that canyon. There are just too many wires, you can't see them. Windy, you've got three bridges and a 150 foot long cable hanging underneath you. Dr. John Madigan and a team from the University of California Davis Veterinary School were also called in to help with the rescue attempt. Over the last few years, we've been trying to design a harness that would support a severely injured horse and allow them to breathe easily, allow them to be comfortable in a harness or a sling support device. He was quite scared, so we had to administer a tranquilizer. Okay, attaboy. Sees his blindfold on We've decided that it's probably best to cover the horse's head with a uh, soft blindfold. Horses can panic, they can become frantic, and they tend to withdraw a little bit with a blindfold. They actually don't panic in the dark. started to actually sink and drop down as we were putting the last hooks on so we were very fortunate with our timing that the peak sedation occurred right at the time we were ready to lift. It was technically an extremely difficult series of things that had to happen. He had to gradually move him away from the bridge and then get over the bridge to fly out.
collect my thoughts while I'm flying the animal out. Right. If anything goes wrong, I'm going to have to let this animal go. The plan was to fly Sinbad five miles to a field next to a ranger station. And now I can hear the helicopter coming. I can't see anything yet. I see this helicopter, but I don't see Sinbad. And then all of a sudden, up over the trees, I see Sinbad hanging at the bottom of this helicopter, and I was just so thankful that he had made the flight. But we're not out of the woods yet. Now we have to set him down, and we have to bring him back. Didn't seem to want to stand at all. I thought the animal was dead. That hurt to have so much done and to lose the animal now. He, he was in very poor shape as compared to the, to the day before. His membranes were very gray. His heart rate was real low. And, and I was wondering whether he was just going to die on the spot. The initial thing I thought to do is to give him the reversal agent that'll counter some of the bad things that happen when you sedate a horse. Easy now. It's okay. And pretty soon, he started to roll his eyes. And his color started coming back. And he started moving. Come on, son. Come on up. Come on, Come on baby. Come on, baby. Come on up. Come, Come on up. Come on up. There you go. Good boy. He was standing. Oh, good boy. And it was an exhilarating feeling. I don't, believe it, but he don't, want too bad. I don't know what the prognosis is going to be for him, but he's going to be back home. And he's made it through something that, that this was a total miracle. Three months later, Sinbad continues to recover from the fractured elbow he suffered in the fall. Sherry looks forward to a day when she may be able to ride him again. The people that help rescue Sinbad, there is a lot of heartfelt things for them. Because if it wasn't for what they did, I wouldn't have him. Oh, yeah, what a good boy. Just for Sinbad, a little no-name horse that to most people probably isn't worth anything. But is my family. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Sinbad's recovery was, was quite amazing. He just had the heart to come through this. With flying colors, he healed very well in spite of, of taking such a bad fall. When my wife is happy, I'm happy. Sometimes I wish I could say that I'm my wife's best friend, but I think it's Sinbad. <laughs> Next. Where's the gun now? Do you still have it in his hand? If we're going to a gun call, we have to be sure that when the officers arrive, they are in a safe situation. Sometimes the person just won't give up the gun. 